Ms. Vrinda Saroop is a former IAS officer and a well-known educationist. She serves on the executive committee of DPS Society and is on the board and is on the board of a number of not-for-profit organizations. In the Indian Administrative Services, she led challenging assignments both in Uttar Pradesh and for the Government of India, including her work as Secretary School Education and Secretary Food and Public Distribution. I now invite her to the podium to share a few words with us. Thank you very much, Sanjay, <coughs> for inviting me to this forum. And, uh, you know, as Dr. Sen was saying, what, what attracted you to the book, of course, it was that it's, you know, Sanjay had written it and said you must read on it and you must comment on it when it was in the making. But I think what attracted me most was it was dedicated to Anita Kaul whose lifetime and who was an old comrade in arms uh, and who's for whom a people-centric approach is something which she made many of us learn also with a great depth. So thank you very much for uh, you know, allowing me to come here. Let me also compliment you on a, what is a very, very readable, relevant and topical book. Um, it's something which many of us in this room would resonate with, many who have worked in government and many who have worked with government and many who have worked in the developmental sector in many of those topics which Sanjay has so uh, encompassed in his book. And <clears throat> what came out for me in this book was Firstly, it's very accurate and compassing uh, analysis of what has been happening in the developmental sector. Um, and I'm sorry, I'll focus a little bit more on the development sector because that has been my uh, route in the profession and uh, somewhere where, um, you know, health, education, child care, uh, food, nutrition has been some of the areas which one had the opportunity of working closely with. So it's a fairly accurate and relevant analysis of what has worked and what has not worked. And that is important to start off with before you start developing an alternative way of looking at things. And <clears throat> I agree with the uh, speakers before that you know even it it did fox me also that how can there be an alternative agenda the agenda is quite well known uh, the democratic polity uh, development of uh, of its citizens to get to the uh, last mile and so on and so forth but then you'd also realize what what is not working and I think for uh, many of us uh, that central theme, which is to look at the poorest of poor, uh, to look at what is vividly brought out in Birsa and Rasika's home and family requirements, um, is, is it brings to you, uh, and maybe many here in this room uh, who are contemporary civil servants of Sanjay's uh, would realize that we, we were also groomed and trained uh, in, a, in a mindset which looked at not just public good, but it also looked at what, what was a Gandhian philosophy to say that what is the last man, the poorest man in the street, how does this affect him? Would it make a difference to his or her life? So this, this perspective, I think, is, is something which bringing it back uh, is never, never uh, outdated, it's always relevant, and I think this book brings it out vividly in the anecdotal 
changes that it maps or the problems which Birsa and Rasika face uh, is something which resonates with all of us. Uh, it is also, um, I think, what I've, another take I found in this book was its interconnectedness of the various issues which uh, Sanjay has brought together in this book. And this is something which, again, we tend to look at in silos, and especially those of us who have worked in government, we tend to have departmental fixes on these. And it, it's, it's pretty hard to look at you know, how it affects a human being's life across the spectrum. This health is equally important as is the schooling for her children for Rasika. So these are, I think this was another great value that I found in uh, um, this book uh, and how it, it impacts the last person's, uh, uh, you know, change in life for the better. But I think um, the book is largely focused on what government could do or the government policies could not do or the government's implementation could not uh, quite get there. And I think that is a, that's a realism which lives with all of us who have worked in government. It's not that the government does not do, and I, I agree with Dr. Sen, it, but this is no reflection. There are changes which happen, but there are, and, I, and I, this is what Sanjay and I sometimes talk about, that government is not the last end of delivery. It can be enabling, it can be, you know, it has the drive, it has the pelf, it has the scale, it has the capacities to be able to make differences. And it does. Any government does. We've worked in the states, we've worked in the central government. These changes do happen. Maybe they're incremental, maybe they are gradual, maybe they're sometimes difficult to detect, but an enabling environment always helps. But my agreement ends there, and uh, there is a whole lot of circumstances which actually make government efforts tick or not tick. And the more responsive a government is to those sounds, those ideas, those, um, you know, the experiences which are coming from elsewhere, a large part of what was articulated very well by Mr. Alexander is if we are impervious to that, then nothing of that which is in the design of government can work. And I'll illustrate this with largely a sector which I've worked closely in, which is education. I mean, we all know the big thrust for universal elementary education, um, uh, universal primary education, which started in the 80s. And many of us were in the ringside at that time looking at uh, that issues of education and why, after so many years, we were still look of independence. We were looking at issues of why children aren't in school. And then you say there were no schools, and so you built schools. So you said that you need teachers, you did teachers. And this is part of that incremental growth. But a lot of the pressure which worked on government to do it is something which silence and doesn't get into uh, literature. It was a social, it was a civil society led, it was with a lot of non-profits uh, who were working in the field of grassroots education, who were crying out, who were talking to government, were dialoguing with government that you need to do something big. And that's where we hear of the D district primary education program coming. And when government set its mind to it, it put in the resources, it put in all the capacities that it needed to make that difference. So these are pressures which are essential and, uh, and I think for the governments to be responsive and to be able to read that is what to my mind uh, makes a lot of difference both in the relevance of the program as well as uh, uh, its execution. 
So much, much later on, um, even the Right to Education Act, there was a fair amount of civil society pressure that this was a compulsory requirement and there should be something to be done about it. And, and even those who drafted it, even those who worked on it, were many people who, who had rich grassroots experience and who felt what could work. So what can work at the grassroots is something which I think many of you may not agree, but governments are a little impervious to, though we know the larger public good, but the detailing, uh, what the last woman in the, uh, in the village is thinking, what is the, uh, the, the actual requirement of a person, these are things which, <coughs> excuse me, I think governments need to be open to um, uh, responsiveness. More recently, for instance, I see the uh, new education policy brings a focus on foundational learning. Now, this is a crying need. It's been going on for a long time. But to find its place in the NPE, it took an immense lot of lobbying on the, pri uh, on the uh, uh, civil society sector to be able to convince government that this is something which must find pride of place prioritization in this large gamut of education. So uh, governments are not monolithic in that sense. They must absorb these ideas. And Sanjay does mention in his last chapter that governments must be open. And they must be open to ideas, to uh, partnerships, and to uh, collaborations, which actually bring those policies <coughs> to realize. So I think there's a limit in what we can expect from governments unless they are open and uh, are able to see these uh, values in themselves. But lastly, let me close by uh, also saying it is, it is a book to me which triggers debate. It triggers the more disagreement there is, the better the debate. And uh, it, it is something which is not just interesting for a civil servant to read or a development uh, sector worker to read. I think it's something which any lay person could read, could absorb, could enjoy reading. And I think that's, that's important in a book to be able to enjoy it and to be able to find relevance in it in your own which way. Thank you so much.